Tyler Johnson is a young man just starting out his career. And as a member of the Convertibles, we're going to talk to him a little bit about what his role is. Tyler, thanks for coming in today. Yeah, no problem. What brought you to the Convertibles? I was looking for an opportunity to play in a, a big ensemble. And seeing that they focused on classic rock and rhythm and blues stuff, I knew you know that's kind of an era in music where Barry Sachs excelled. And so I thought that would be a great opportunity for me and I could learn a lot. So you played Barry Sachs? Yes. See, you smile. Every time you say that, <laughs> you smile. Do you, you must love that instrument. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to play it because it's an instrument that a lot of people run from because it can be such a chore to carry a heavy instrument and have to blow so much air through it. But I enjoy all of those things about playing and I love being heard on the bottom range through the speakers. Is that implying that you're actually a harder working musician than the average musicians? Uh, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> but I just enjoy the work that I've chosen to do. Yeah. The Barry Sax is so interesting. And let's clarify that. We call it, in music circles, we call it the Barry Sax, but it's actually the baritone yes. sax. So you have, tell me about the different... So there's soprano, which is a straight saxophone. Mm -hmm. Then you have the alto saxophone, which is a little bit bigger than the soprano and has a curved bell. Mm -hmm. So kind of like an L that's bent. Mm -hmm. And then there's the tenor, which just looks like a very big alto, which is a lot more curved too. But then the Barry is kind of twice the size of all of them, and it's maybe this big and has a curled neck that mm -hmm. they call the pigtail because the most saxophones have a neck that comes straight to you, but the Barry's neck would be so long that it would go past your face. Wow. If you see me coming, baby, turn your light out and open your door. Barry Sachs your first choice? Yes, Barry Sachs is my first choice okay. out of the, the saxophone family. Um, mm -hmm. I teach alto saxophone, but it's it's always funny that I'll teach alto saxophone and then leave for a gig that night on baritone instead. <laughs> and you also play flute? Yes, I also play flute and clarinet. How did you, how did you get into playing uh, uh, music? Well, as a kid I knew I always wanted to play music, but music education it was always the schools I went to, they would always say, oh, you know, you have to do it in third grade, but I was in second, or wow. I was in third grade, oh, you have to wait till fourth grade. So I actually didn't start playing until I got to high school. I went to Sarah High School in Gardena, mm -hmm. which is mostly known for football and basketball. Mm -hmm. So our, our band program wasn't that big, but so we had like one teacher that would usually spend a little extra time with us to help us learn our music and teach us about marching. And we got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, which is what I think helped me mold into a musician at a later stage, but still keep up with other people. So you're in a marching band, you're playing alto sax. Mm -hmm. And did you play for four years in the, in the yeah, marching band? Yeah, I did four years of marching band, and I also did drumline for a little bit, and we had a jazz band. And I was drum major from my last two years of high school. Really? Yeah. I took some time after high school and community college where I didn't do music mm -hmm. for two years. And the funny thing is during that time, I was very much trying to not do music. I said, okay, I don't want to do music. I got into a school for aviation and I was just gonna go down that path. Wow. And then after two years, I said, you know, I really miss playing music. So I got back into, they had a big band at El Camino College and I tried that out. And that was where I decided, you know what, this is what I want to do. Wow. So then I spent another two or three years preparing to transfer to a state level school. And so that's how I got to Northridge. Which is a great, school for music yes right and a, and a lot of people are unaware of this i think except for the gem. students yeah um but it is really good so what would you say is the most important thing that you learned uh at uh, csun i think the most important thing i learned there was to really dive into the music and the, the teachers there really inspire the students to take time to listen to an album 30 times back to back constantly repeated get it into your head, hear every instrument, every nuance in the music, and learn how to learn a music and play it on your own. And then you joined up with uh, the Convertibles. Yes, I, I joined the Convertibles in my last year at mm -hmm. CSUN, mm -hmm. and it was actually through CSUN that I found out about it. Is They had sent out an email asking for horn players, and our director passed it on to the students, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, this sounds fun, why not? And so yeah. I sent some videos that I had to Don, and now I'm in the band for a year. Had you ever uh, played rhythm and blues before? 
No, but I, I grew up listening to a lot of rhythm and blues stuff, so it's always been kind of at home music for me whenever I play it. It's always right. very fun. Yeah. Well, listen, I've, I've heard you in these recordings and I've seen you guys play, and you're doing an amazing job for a young man. And Thank I you. don't mean that in a, in a, a, a condescending way at all. Mm -hmm. I think you have a great future ahead of you. Thank you. And, and, I, and I congratulate you for, for being able to find such a great band to, to contribute to. So keep up the good work, and thanks for coming in and sharing your story. Thanks for having me. Man.